If you like this video, consider supporting the channel on Patreon. Link in the description below. Now, you might be looking at the title and wondering, what is GenoKids? Well, GenoKids, which is one word, not two, is an indie developed character action game from developer Nukefist, who are new to the scene and are comprised of apparently only two people. Which you'll come to find is honestly really impressive. Now, given the game isn't out yet, this video will not be too terribly long. Not at all, actually. And it's just going to be a review of the demo, which I gained early access to via a code given to me by the developers through email, which I am eternally grateful for. Let me start by talking about what you can immediately see. That being the fact that this game has a cell shaded visual style, much like other goaded titles like Neo, The World Ends of You, and Hi-Fi Rush. I'll say it any chance I get, this is honestly my favorite visual style, and I love seeing modern titles utilize this style to the greatest of effects. Sure, Hi-Fi Rush's take on the style is clearly more high budget, but that's kind of the beauty of cell shading. It can still be pulled off really well even when you have a much lower budget, and Geno Kids is definitely proof of that. The way the models are built actually reminds me a lot of Neo The World Ends of You, which is the biggest compliment that I could ever give anything ever. The game's use of darker colors and a fairly moodier atmosphere blended with the stylized anime inspired look, however, reminds me a lot of the manga and anime Soul Eater, which is helped even more by the moon on the title screen giving off big Soul Eater vibes as well. Speaking of vibes, these character designs are 100% a vibe, and I love all of them. Blue and yellow are definitely my favorites design-wise, which makes me sad that yellow, as well as green, are not playable in this demo. But whoever did the character designs 100% knocked it out of the park. I am a big fan of all four of our main leads. And before anyone tries to say anything or get all weird about it, I asked about it in the Discord server for the game and the main characters are adults despite the game's title. Anyway, I also really dig the anime designs. They're very cartoonishly gothic, which, again, makes me think of Soul Eater, so I'm starting to think this is intentional. We don't see a lot of enemies in this demo, but we see enough that I can say that enemy variety is pretty good so far. Though I imagine there'll be more enemy types in the final game than what we see on offer in the demo. Given that, I would like to point out that I honestly think that this demo succeeds at what I believe a demo should succeed at first and foremost. That being that it sells me on the game, while also giving me a small but telling taste of what the game has to offer. This demo right here is only one level long, and while that level is not super long at all, you can get through it around 10 minutes if you know what you're doing, this one level shows me a solid variety of enemies, several battles so I can get plenty out of the combat, a feel for how the non-combat side of the gameplay will look with the parkour sections, and wrapping all of that up with a boss fight that puts a nice final bow on the demo experience. The only thing this demo doesn't really give me a good idea of is the story, as I still have no clue of what this game's plot will actually entail from the demo alone. The Steam page for the game says that it's about a band of musicians fighting against an alien invasion, but that's quite literally all I know story-wise. And I didn't get that out of the demo, I had to go to the Steam page to find that out. If you'll recall last year's video on Neon White's demo, you might remember that I got a decent idea of that game's starting plot from it. Primarily because the demo for the game was the first several levels, then a handful of later levels out of context. But my point is that by comparison, I have no clue what the plot of Geno Kids is outside of the Steam page's little blurb. Now, this isn't me knocking the game for this. Not at all. I'm sure the final game will have more of a story, and this whole me not knowing what's actually happening is 100% a side effect of the fact that this demo is one level long with only two cutscenes present. Two cutscenes that I'm not even sh entirely sure if they're finished or not. Like static 2D image thing could easily be a stylistic choice or it could easily be placeholders for something a little more fluid. Either way, I think it looks fine. I don't think they need to change it if they don't want to. I just can't tell if it's finished or not. On the cutscenes, I will say that the two cutscenes on offer give me an instant idea of Blue and Red's base personalities and an idea of their dynamic with one another. The first cutscene alone does this, with Blue being more collected of the two, and reining Red in before he does something fucking stupid. And then the second cutscene is Blue reveal her interest in something that Red views as immature, which he then promptly, immaturely, laughs at and makes fun of her for, to an annoying degree. Ironic, but I think that's kind of the point. 
Blue, of course, then deflects his claims, but that doesn't really convince Red at all. Again, nothing revolutionary writing-wise so far, but I imagine this level in the demo is a very early level. It's probably level 2 or something, if I had to guess. And thus, I imagine these characters will be built upon both on their own and with one another in the full game's narrative. I chose to get my thoughts on narrative stuff out of the way first, because there's really nothing for me to say outside of what little I have to say. Whereas with the combat, which is the meat of the whole experience, I have quite a bit to say. Which, by the way, is impressive since we're missing two-fourths of our toolkit since, again, in this demo, yellow and green are not playable, leaving us only with red and blue. Gameplay makes it so that it feels like your whole team is a solid unit, the one true player character. What well, with the focus on constantly switching characters to chain together longer combos and to get that style ranking up because, yes, as you may have guessed, Jinno Kids has a style meter that goes up in letter grade the better you pull off stylish combos, much like Devil May Cry. The way the game puts a focus on character switching means that for this to work, the gameplay needs to make swapping characters feel seamless and fast, allowing for everything to flow seamlessly into one another, and I think it knocks it out of the park. Jinno Kids has that exact same quality of flow that I praised KH24 back in that video, where every single move and mechanic flows seamlessly into one another, and nothing ever takes you out of the experience. For the rest of this video, I want to make a point that I'm going to be talking about this with the Xbox controls, since that's the controller I used when playing the game on PC. You can change the UI to display buttons for Xbox, PlayStation, and even the Switch controller, which is awesome. Honestly, if you want my opinion, I believe that this should be standard for all PC games with controller support. Just like how I believe fully remappable buttons should be standard. Which, by the way, is also a feature in Geno Kids, because this game apparently knows how to satisfy me. Now. With this in mind, you have your base attack, which is done with the B button, a jump, which is the A button, a block button, which is the X button that doubles as your dodge button when you're pushing the analog stick in a direction. If you're doing the dodge action, i.e. moving the analog stick while hitting X when in the air, your character will do a little spin while airborne, and that animation just calls to mind Sora's aerial dodge from KH2. No, like seriously, look at these two animations side by side. This cannot be a coincidence. Probably isn't, actually. Now the Y button acts as your launch attack when grounded and your ground slamming move when you're airborne. Hitting RB activates your lock on, while the LB button activates hype, which is essentially this game's answer to the devil trigger from Devil May Cry. When in this form, you hit harder and as the hype meter drains, your health returns. So I advise saving this move for when you're in a pinch and could use the boost. I really want to see green and yellow's hype forms because red and blue's hype forms go hard. Blue's bunny mask actually makes me think of Violet from Neon White, and Red's mask just feels like a combination of Ghost Rider and something out of Bleach. So what I'm saying is it reminds me of Robbie Reyes, who is the best Ghost Rider, so that's great. The right trigger is attached to the flow menu. See, there's this bar under your health that measures your flow. When it's built up enough, you have the ability to use one of the four moves under the flow meter. Think of it kind of like the magic system in KH, with the flow menu being like the shortcut menu from that series. When you have flow, you can use a move, but when you're running on empty, you can't. It builds up as you fight, so it fittingly flows into combat really nicely. Each character, by the way, has four flow moves attached to each face button, which allows for a bit more combat variety. Small aesthetic note, I don't know if this is even worth pointing out, but the flow meter is blue, which made me initially think that it would change color with the player character, but when I switched to red, it stayed blue. I don't know if this is even worth pointing out, but if either of the developers are listening and they want to make an aesthetic change, if you can make the flow meter change color with the specific character you're playing, that would be neat. Now, the left trigger is your parkour dash, which is used to parkour to certain spots and levels to progress forward during those previously mentioned non-combat parkour sections. It's a lot more automated than the platforming in, say, Hi-Fi Rush, but it flows nicely and never feels cumbersome to execute, which is a good thing when speed is a big focus of your game. But what I love is that the parkour dash has combat use as well, as it allows you to dash towards enemies and close the gap. It reminds me a lot of Sora's air step from KH3, but without the need to activate shot lock before doing it, thus making activating it here even faster. As someone who absolutely loves air step in KH3, seeing another game executed just as well is very nice to see, and I'm honestly a big fan of that. I didn't immediately realize the parkour dash had combat potential though, and I didn't figure it out until my third run of the demo. Because yeah, I played this demo multiple times because it's just that fucking good. Hell, part of the problem I had with writing the script was writing about this game just makes me want to play it again, but you know, the game's not out in full yet, so I just have to keep returning back to this demo again and again 
and again for my fix. Anyway, getting back on track, if you get hit, your character will get staggered and fly backward. You don't recover until you hit the ground, and there is no aerial recovery like in Kingdom Hearts. But there is a way to recover in the air, though. If you switch characters while you're stunned, you essentially immediately recover. This is very useful. Take the Valkyrie fight, which is the boss at the end of the demo. Getting caught off guard by something like its spin move could easily trap you into several hits with no chance to recover. But, if you switch characters, then you're free to quickly hit the block button and thus avoid any unnecessary damage outside of that initial hit. I didn't mention it before, but you can't hold down the block. When you hit block, it stays up for just a moment, so timing is actually really important to make the most out of the block. This isn't like the joke of a parry from Sonic Frontiers, where you could just hold that button indefinitely with no consequences, including allowing yourself to float in air indefinitely. The block in Geno Kids actually reminds me a lot of the guard from Kingdom Hearts in this way, especially since the game lacks a parry, which is more than okay when the gameplay on offer is so good. Not every game needs a Royal Guard equivalent, it's fine. Overall, the game's combat and just gameplay in general is so damn good and satisfying. I can easily see this game becoming one of my new favorite games ever once it's finished and finally drops, especially given how in love I already am with what little of the game I have access to right now. You do not want to sleep on this one, especially with how fucking good this demo is alone. I have no idea if this video will be ready before the Kickstarter ends, but I very much suggest supporting it if it's still up when this video goes up. They've already reached their goal, they actually did that within the first 24 hours, which is amazing since their first Kickstarter failed. But regardless, if the Kickstarter's still live when this video goes up, absolutely support it. And if it's not, then keep your eyes on this project regardless, because if it keeps going the rate that it's going now, it could be one of the best action games to ever release. I actually haven't touched on its atmosphere and music yet though, so let's get to that. In the demo, the atmosphere is fairly moody in the previously mentioned Soul Eater type of way, with the cooler colors and the dark shadows accented with the cell shading. And musically, the game's battle music is fittingly rocking, but when out of combat, the music is in the same tune, but performed differently. When out of the combat, the music is more relaxed and subdued, and I really dig it. Someone else in the Geno Kids Discord server said it reminded them of Danganronpa, and yeah, I definitely get those Masafumi Takata vibes from the soundtrack. Apparently, Killer7 was actually an influence on this game's presentation, and Masafumi Takata was the composer of that game as well as Danganronpa. So, this would track. I really want to hear the rest of this game's soundtrack because what little of it I have heard is great. Genuinely, I have basically no complaints with this demo. Except for one minor gripe. See, when you run in the game, if you run for a bit without stopping, then your character breaks into a sprint. Not unlike how your character in games like Devil May Cry 3, 4, or 5 break into sprints under the same circumstances. However, if you switch characters while in full tilt sprint, you'll immediately lose that momentum and that's... That's not great. That's my only note. I hope the final game changes this so that you keep your momentum when switching characters while sprinting. And that's it! That is literally my only complaint. Do you understand how fucking good that is? That my only criticism is the fact you lose momentum when you switch characters while sprinting? A very specific scenario? I am definitely going to keep my eyes on this game. Because it seems to be everything I look for in an action game. And it's this exact kind of exciting, unique, fun, and inspired type of game that makes me continue to sing about how I honestly believe we are in such a good time for video games. Because the indie scene is constantly delivering banger after banger that seems to want to deliver on anything that anyone could ever want. Geno Kids goes hard. I will be buying this day one when the full game finally releases. And I'm going to keep my eyes on this game for every update that I can. I am craving more of this game already, and I cannot wait to see more of it. 
I want to support this title as much as I can, and if I had the money, I'd give as much as I could to help fund this because this is brilliant. The game is great. I don't know what more there is for me to say at this point. I'm definitely going to be giving it a full video when it releases. Hey, I promise the full video on that game is still happening. I promise, please. It's just, it's taking a while. But seriously, Jinno Kids is so damn good, and I'm 100% sure by the time this video goes up, the demo will be public and available for all of you to play. So I suggest going to Steam and downloading the demo as soon as you're done with this video. This is the note I want to leave this video on, by the way. Jinno Kids is looking to be one of the best games, and I cannot wait to see more of it.